live session on smart methods and techniques to solve questions from algebra brought to you by Talent Sprint. Well, uh, at the outset, I would like to announce a very important uh, update that is uh, the SSE CGL Taiwan exam for the year 2016 has been postponed and will now be conducted in the month of August. I'm sure most of you uh, who are planning to appear for this exam will be aware of this news, but for those who are unaware yet, let me tell you that the SSC CGL Taiwan exam has been postponed to the month of August. It was earlier scheduled, tentatively scheduled uh, for May, 8th and 22nd May where the dates declared, but now it stands postponed for three months, close to three months. So I would say uh, you have enough time to prepare now, right? All those who had started their preparation a little late will find a lot of time to prepare, right? I'm sure three months is more than sufficient for you to get ready uh, for the SSC CGL Taiwan exam, okay? Now, this session on smart methods to solve questions from algebra was actually scheduled a couple of weeks earlier, but uh, we had to cancel it due to some reasons and uh, we had a special session on the SBI clerk's uh, notification that came up uh, recently, right? But as promised, we bring this session back to you on algebra and I'm sure all those who are appearing for the SSC CGL Taiwan exam will find it really useful. All right. Now you know that there are four sections in Taiwan exam: quantitative aptitude, general intelligence and reasoning. Then we have English comprehension and general knowledge. Now when it comes to quantitative aptitude, there are fifty questions, half of which come from arithmetic ability part, like percentages, time and work, time and distance, partnership, ratio and proportion, profit and loss, simple and compound interest, ages, mensuration, etc. Right. And then the remaining half of the paper has topics. Uh, I mean, covers topics like trigonometry, geometry, algebra, right, certs and indices, heights and distances, which are not there in the other competitive exams. Like if you compare SSC CGL exam with a bank exam or any other uh, government exam there, right, you'll find that the major difference here is pure mathematics topics like trigonometry, geometry, algebra are given a high weightage, right? 50% of the quantitative aptitude part is constituted by these three or four topics. And of which algebra is a very important one, right? We find easily about eight to nine questions coming in from algebra. And this is one area where students generally find it difficult to arrive at the answer, right? There are like complex equations given to us. We have to simplify them and arrive at the required answer. So the, the point is, how do we make it simple, right? How can we solve questions from algebra in a smart way? Well, the technique that I'm going to discuss today is actually very, very simple and very easy to apply, provided you have practiced enough on it, right? And let me tell you, it's very easy to understand to begin with, right? By the end of this session, you will know how to use this technique. It's just that you practice a few more questions. You have anyway enough time for the exam now, more than three months. So practice good number of questions so that you can apply it efficiently in the exam, all right? And this technique here is useful not only for algebra, but even other topics like trigonometry and in a few questions of geometry also. This is called substitution, right? Simple substitution of random values in the given question and the answer options to verify which of the options satisfy the given question, right? Satisfy the equations or the conditions given in the question, all right? So what I'll do now is I have chosen a few questions of these type, right? Which can be answered using this smart method. So we'll solve a few of these questions. I'll share my screen with all of you, which has got these questions and discuss the solutions of uh, the same, right? But before we begin, uh, I would just like to get a feedback from all of you on how's your preparation for this exam going on, right? It is just that uh, the notification came last week about postponement of the exam, but otherwise, how's your preparation, right? I'm sure uh, if the notification of postponement was not released, you had only one week left for the exam, right? Or 10 days left for the exam. 8 May was the first lot. So by this time, you should have been fully ready and geared up to take the exam, right? And I think that is how you should continue your preparation, right? Don't relax or don't uh, take it easy that exam is three months away, so we have, uh, you know, we can, we can do it later. Don't postpone your preparation. Only the exam has got postponed. Your preparation hasn't. You should continue preparing at the same phase. And in fact, you know, uh, you know, make the best use of this delay in the exam, right? Make the best use of this opportunity. So how is the preparation going in general for the SSC CGL Taiwan exam, right? I like, you know that preparation, like I always say is 
in, in two parts, right? In two modes. One is a learning mode, and the other is practice mode. And if you're really serious about this exam, you should have, you know, finished your learning mode long ago, right? You should now be in that serious practice mode where you are practicing as many questions as possible, right? Previous years papers, mock exams, etc. Okay. So I'm sure all of you have finished the learning mode, right? The 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 phase where you learn the uh, various topics, the shortcuts, the smart methods to solve the questions and, and you know basics and fundamentals, everything is, is covered there. So how is it going? How is it going? Well, let me also tell you that it is being speculated that the SEC CGL Tire 1 exam may go online, right? And, and it is believed that because of this change in the modality of the exam, it has been postponed, right? The reason uh, for exam being postponed is that they want to take it online. If you if you actually look at the notification in detail, the SEC CGL Tire 1 exam notification, it clearly mentioned that the exam may be conducted online. In fact, this was mentioned in the last year's notification as well, right? If you see the SSC CHSL exams notification, they had mentioned that they may conduct an online exam, right? So it looks like they have taken it seriously finally and the exam would go online. So I'm sure all the talent sprint students will have a great advantage because they have done their complete preparation online sitting at home and also taken a lot of mock tests in the online format, all right? So, you know, be prepared for that. I mean, I don't want to comment more on this, right, it's not confirmed yet, they have not declared anything, but exam may go online, right, and another uh, important update is that tire one exam may be a qualifier from this year onwards, may just be a qualifier, right, like till last year, they used to include the score of tire one exam in your final uh, scores, right, I mean the merit list was decided based on the scores obtained in tire one exam plus tire two exam plus the interview, but it is being said that the tire one exam from this year onwards may just be a qualifier round, right? You will either get selected or rejected in tire one, and then tire two exam and interview. Of course, interview again will not be there from this year onwards. Tire two exam will be your actual, uh, you know, actual game, actual stage where you maximize your score to improve your chances of selection. Anyway, I think I have not got enough responses. How is it going? How is the preparation going? All good? I, I could see one or two comments It said, you know, it's going great. Now look at this. Swagato Banerjee says, Tire 1 exam postponed? Question mark. Yes, it has got postponed. I thought this would not be a news at all for all of you because this was, you know, declared at least a week ago. So I thought all of you would know it by now. But good that I've mentioned the postponed, postponement of the exam, right? It has got postponed. Yes. Rajeshwari says it's going good. Uh, Moin says practicing, sir, three times. Okay. That's like having three meals a day, right? You have to practice thrice a day. Vikram Reddy says it is moderate. Okay. So, what's the plan then? When do you want to take it to the high gear, right? Pankaj mentioned it's great. Shubhranshu says the practice, practice, and more practice mode is going on. Srikant says I'm doing good. Going good. Praveen has got a Praveen has got a question, right? Which session be focused more for this changed strategy? Well, I don't really follow what you have mentioned, right? Which session or which section? What do you mean there? Which section to be focused more after the strategy has changed? Okay, I think while you try to be a little elaborative with your question, let us move on to the actual questions for the session today which is on algebra so what i'm going to do now is share my screens with all of you okay and it will have questions one question each time i'll give you about 30 seconds and then discuss the smart method to crack this one, okay so here we go sharing my screens now with all of you and here comes the first question on your screens now so as you can see a complex equation given to you, right? Not very complex, looks simple, but what is to be simplified is complex. x square plus y square plus z square equals to xy plus yz plus zx. Then the value of 3x power 4 plus 7y power 4 plus 5z power 4 divided by 5x square y square plus 7y square z square plus 3z square x square is. Options are 1, 2, minus 1 or 0. 
and your time starts now. I'll give you 30 seconds like I mentioned and then look at the smart method. So what is the value of the given expression 3x power 4 plus 7y power 4 plus 5z power 4 divided by 5x square y square plus 7y square z square plus 3z square x square. See without, uh, without any thought you should know that option C is wrong. Option C cannot be the answer. I mean without doing anything with respect to the question the moment you throw a glance at the options you would know that option 3 is ruled out straight away ruled out and this should happen within 0 seconds right. How do we say this? See if you look at the expressions here if you look at the terms in the given expression 3x power 4 plus 7y power 4 plus 5z power 4 divided by 5x square y square 7y square z square plus 3z square x square all the variables will be positive right x power 4 will be a positive number y power 4 will be a positive integer z power 4 will also be a positive number and x square, y square, y square, z square, z square, x square, all will be positive. So 3 into positive number plus 7 into positive number plus 5 into positive number divided by 5 into a positive number plus 7 into a positive number plus 3 into a positive number will result in a pos positive value. So how can we say the answer is minus 1? Similarly, let's say if the options are given as minus 2 and minus 3, you don't even have to worry about what the solution is. The only positive option can be taken as a correct answer. Okay. But anyway, option C is ruled out. Now, how do we decide which is correct? 1, 2 or 0? Option A, Option B or Option D? You have 10 more seconds. I can see that most of you have got the answer as Option A. Uh, the most recent comments from Malik and Varsha Agarwal, right? A is what they have got. Malik has got A. Varsha has also got A. How about others? Yes, I think Fezan says it is 1. Option A, which is 1. Uh, Ramakan Sony has got 1. Harsha, Varsha Chaurasia, Dipanshu Singh, and Monin, Vikram, all of you have got option 1. Yes. Right? And we have Srikant and Bindu, Vibha Chaurasia, Shubrangshu. Everyone out there has got option 1. So I'm sure I don't have to explain this to you, right? Answer is going to be option 1. Now, what do we do? See, the idea is this. There, there can be uh, uh, you know, uh, algebraic identity or a formula which can be used to, you know, work on this equation, right? Which is x square plus y square plus z square equals to xy plus yz plus zx, right? And then simplify it or reduce it to this format, right? Whatever is required in the question to arrive at the answer. But then a smart student will simply substitute some values for x and y here and substitute the same values of x and y in the given expression of the question to see which is the correct answer. Because there is no condition given in the question with respect to x and y. It only says x squared plus y squared plus z squared is x y plus y z plus z x. Now it is very easy to solve for x y and z uh, by using trial and error, right? You don't have to actually solve the equation. Just look at it. I mean very simple, right? Can you say x equals to y equals to z equals to 1? Now you may ask me how do you know that this is 1? Well, it, it depends on practice, right? With more practice you will get the right values, uh, you know, quickly. If you put x, y, z all as 1, what happens? 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square is 3. And on the right hand side, we have 1 into 1 plus 1 into 1 plus 1 into 1, which is 3. So, satisfied or not? Yes. Is there any condition given that x, y, z cannot be equal? No. That Nothing like that has been specified. So, I can assume that x, y, z all are equal. In fact, you can also substitute 2. What happens if you substitute 2? 2 square 4 plus 2 square 4 plus 2 square 4. So, 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12. What happens on the right hand side? 2 into 2, 4 plus 2 into 2, 4, plus 2 into 2, 4. So, 4 plus 4 plus 4, 12. So, x, y, z equals to 1 or x, y, z equals to 2. Both of these satisfy. Right or not? Or, can you take 3? You can take 3 also. Can you take 4? You can take 4 also. See, the idea is we are taking that x, y, z, all 3 are equal. So, what happens? x into y becomes x square. y into z becomes y square. z into x becomes z square. x square plus y square plus z square equals to x square plus y square plus z square. That's it. So substitute now, substitute the same values of 1 here, will you get the answer? Substitute 1, see what happens. So 3 into x power 4, 3 into 1 power 4, you don't have to write this in the exam, right, strictly speaking, because, you know, mentally this calculation can be done, nothing complex about it. Divided by 5 into 1 square into 1 square, plus 7 into 1 square into 1 square, plus 3 into 1 square into 1 square. Right, so what are we left with? 3 plus 7 plus 5 upon... 5 plus 7 plus 3. 
So 15 by 15, 1 would be the answer, which is option A. Option A, 1 is the answer. You get it? So just substitute values, just substitute the values uh, of x, y, and z in such a way that the given condition is satisfied. The condition given in the question here is x square plus y square plus z square equals to x y plus y z plus z x. Now this is not very complex to solve. Like we said, it's easy, right? You can easily find out using trial and error. Now you can see uh, a question, a query there that can we substitute x, y, z as 0? No, you cannot. See, you have to be a little careful while doing this random substitution. You can never choose values which will result in undefined a solution. See, if you take x, y, z, all three as 0, the given equation is satisfied. Nothing wrong, right? 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals to 0 plus 0 plus 0, right? So we can say that x, y, z, all three are 0. But the problem is, the moment you substitute same x, y, z as 0 in the given expression, you will find an undefined value, right? It will result in an undefined solution because 0 divided by 0. So no, numerator will be 0 and denominator will also be 0. And you know that 0 by 0 is undefined, right? Undefined and in some cases you may get results as infinity. In, in, in such uh, results, you cannot uh, go ahead with this method, right? If these are the results, you cannot apply the method or you'll have to change your values. So if I substitute 0, I'll get undefined solution. So I say this is not the correct substitution. Go for something else. Are you able to follow? So the answer is option 1. Now, even if you substitute 2 and 3, we get the same answer. Final answer will be option 1. Okay. Moving on to the next question. So that's the method. Substitute values of the given variables, random values, by keeping in mind that the equation has to be satisfied. And then substitute the same values to get the required answer. Look okay, at the next question now. He says the value of n for which 9x power 4 minus 12x cube plus nx square plus uh, minus 8x plus 4 is a perfect square. Now that's an interesting one. He says what should be the value of n such that the given expression 9x power 4 minus 12x cube plus 9, uh, nx square minus 8x plus 4 becomes a perfect square. Options have been given 12, 16, 18 and 24. So try to solve this one now. Solve this question. What should be the value of n? So if you if you go by the conventional method, you will have to play with this expression here. You will have to try to reduce it in the form of you know a, a perfect square. Like for example, x square plus you know x plus one whole whole square. So that will be like a perfect square, right? And then find out the value of n. So either do that or see what the smart method is. You have thirty more seconds. See, the smart method that we are talking about is not applicable for every question of algebra, but applicable for most of the questions, right? But anything needs practice, right? For you to apply it efficiently and quickly, you have to practice, whichever the method be, right? So, keep practicing. I think option B, 16 is what most of you say, but there are a few who also say option C, 18 should be the answer. So, I think there's a there's a fight between these two options. You have to wait and see which is the correct one, right? Option B or option C. I don't see anyone marking option 1 or option 4. Option A or option D, 12 or 24. All of you either say option C, 18 or option B, 16. Let's wait for a few more seconds and then look at the solution. value of n for which nx power 4 minus 12x cube plus nx square minus 8x plus 4 is a perfect square. So Bhagya says it is option C, 18. Vibha has got option B. Bindu has got option B. Anji has got option D. Okay, so we have someone commenting option D. 24 is the answer. Harsha and Varsha, both of them have got 16. Moin has got option C, 18. Right? So this, this looks interesting, huh? different responses. For the previous one, everybody said option 1, option A, 1, but here is some confusion. So shall we look at the method now? Shall we look at the solution? See, look at the question. He says, for what value of n will this expression become a perfect square? Now, if you look at the options, various values of n are given to us, right? 12 or 16 or 18 or 24. The point that we have to observe here is that the question is independent of x. 
if, if you look at the options, I mean, the way the question has been framed, it is actually independent of x. I can, the, the point here is, see, what is algebra? Algebra is where we substitute letters in place of numbers to generalize the concept. Generalizing using it, using x here. Now, the point the question makes here is, whatever be the value of x, whatever be the value of x, there is some value of n for which this expression becomes perfect square. Now, because, now, you may ask me, where is it given that whatever be the value of x? It is not stated directly, but it, it can be understood clearly from the given question, right? It is independent of x. He is not talking anything about x there. Nothing has been mentioned about x. He is only worried about n. For what value of n will this become a perfect square? So, which means, I can take any value of x. I can take any value of x. This expression should be a perfect square for some value of n there. So, what do we do? Let us assume x equals to 1. What is wrong? Nothing wrong. Take x equals to 1. So what happens? This becomes 9 into 1 power 4 minus 12 into 1 cube plus n into 1 square minus 8 into 1 plus 4. Now try to simplify this. 9 minus 12 plus n minus 8 plus 4. What will this result in? 9 minus 12 minus 3 minus 3 minus 8 is minus 11 minus 11 plus 4 is minus 7. So n minus 7. n minus 7. That's it. So basically, by taking x equals to 1, what do we get? n minus 7. The expression reduces to n minus 7. Now the question is, n minus 7 is a perfect square. For what value of n? n minus 7 is a perfect square. For what value of n? Substitute the various options here. Substitute 12. 12 minus 7 is 5. Is that a perfect square? No. 16. 16 minus 7, 9. Is that a perfect square? Yes. So 16 looks like the correct answer. You can verify the remaining options also. 18 minus 7, 11. Not a perfect square. 24 minus 7, is 17 not a perfect square so the only option which satisfies x equal to 1 here is option b 16 and hence that's the answer now you may ask me how do you know x equal to 1 i don't know x is equal to 1 i can take any value of x can you take x equals to 2 yes take x equals to 2 see what happens see in the exam you don't have to do uh, multiple verifications right one verification if it leads you to one option that's the correct answer but let's let's see what happens if you take x equals to 2 so 9 into 2 power 4 is 16 Minus 12 into 2 cube is 8. I mean, we are just trying to check will it satisfy for all the values of x or not. Yes or no? So check it. n into 2 square. n into 2 square is 4. Right? Let me directly substitute 4 there. Right? 2 square is 4. n into 4. Then what's the next term? Next term, n into 4. Next term is minus 8 into 2, 16. Minus 16 plus 4. Now simplify this. 9 into 16 is 144. Right? Then 12 into 8 is 96 plus 4n minus 16 plus 4. Now 144 minus 96 is 48. 48 minus 16 is 32. 32 plus 4 is 36. So this is 36 plus 4n. 36 plus 4n. Now substitute the same value of n that we have got 16. So if n is equal to 16, this will become what? 36 plus 4 into 16, which is 64. 64 plus 36 is 100. Is 100 a perfect square? Yes. So that is what is the question here. Right? For any value of x, n should be taken as 16 because it results in a perfect square there. You're getting it? So this is the smart way of solving questions from algebra. I repeat, not every question from algebra can be answered using this, right? Let me come to the screen for a, for a few seconds, right? The idea is not every question from algebra can be solved using this uh, substitution method, but most of these questions can actually be done. How many of you would have otherwise done some conventional method or traditional method which which takes a lot of time and you are not sure whether you will be able to crack it or not. Right? As such, every question from algebra is different. You cannot categorize in, kind, in terms like model 1, model 2, model 3. I mean, at best you can say questions based on finding out minimum value, right? And what else? That's it. All other questions are like different. Every question is different, right? So, try to see where can you apply this, right? I mean, that comes through practice. I cannot say that, okay, these are the types of questions where you can use substitution. You should learn it yourself through practice, right? The, 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 the point here is where you find questions independent of the given variables. I mean, in this case, like you've seen, options are independent of x. Substitute, substitute any value of x. If options also involve x, then what do you do? Whatever you have substituted for x in question, the same x has to be substituted in the options also. And then check which one satisfies. You get it again? Like in this case, instead of... Uh, Let's say instead of numbers, options are given in terms of x. What happens? A little extra effort. Method remains the same. Substitution. But the point is, whatever x has been taken up in the question, the same x has to be substituted in the answer options as well. And then check which one satisfies. We will we'll probably solve one or two questions of 
those type also where options and questions both need substitution so look at this ramakan says i used a long process i used a long process how much time will save if you if you just go by substitution right okay so let me share my screens again uh, with with another question next question on your screens now p minus 2q equals to 4 right what does it say p minus 2q equals to 4 then the value of pq minus 8q cube minus 24 pq minus 64 is that's it he says p minus 2q equals to 4 you take any value of p and q satisfying this equation you take some values of p and q satisfying this equation can you do it randomly yes you can do it randomly like for example let's say p is equal to 8 can you take p equals to 8 take p equals to 8 so 8 minus so what will give you 4 8 minus 4 will give you 4 so can you say 2q should be equal to 4 yes if 2q is 4 implies q will be equal to 2 that's it you're done if you take p as 8 q should be 2 so 8 minus 2 into 2 4 now it is not a rule that p should be taken as 8 you can take p as 16 if you take p as 16 accordingly change, change the value of q find out the value of q and then substitute you're getting it so substitute now now that we have taken 8 and q as the values of p and q substitute the same in the given expression so p q 8 q minus 8 into q q q q is 2 q minus 24 into 8 into 2 minus 64 now simplify what is the result see 8 cube is 5 to 12 minus this 2 cube is like 8 8 into 8 is 64 minus 24 into 8 into 2 simplify this 24 into 8 what is 24 into 8 192 192 into 2 you, you're getting it 24 into 8 how do you do this 240 minus 48 right 8 is not 8 take 8 as 10 minus 2 so 24 should be multiplied by 8 we are taking it 10 times, giving it back 2 times. So 240 minus 40, 192. 192 into 2. How much is 192 into 2? 384, right? 384. So minus 384. Minus 64. Simplify now. I mean that's it. You've got a numerical value. And that should be taken as the answer. So 384 and, and you add all these negative terms. 64 and 64 is 128. 128 plus 384. As in adding all the negative terms, right? So take minus common. So 128 plus 384. How do you add this? 380 plus 120 is uh, 500, right? And 4 and 8 is 12, 512. So 512 minus 512. What will be the result? 0. That's your answer. Option B. Now maybe taking 8 and 2 has made it a little complex because you have to work on higher numbers. You take P equals to 4. If I take p equals to 4, what happens? q should be 0 because 4 minus 0 will give you 4. Done. That's it. Much easier. Substitute now p equals to 4, what happens? I'm, I'm doing second substitution. Not required. Let me tell you it is not required in the exam. But just for the sake of verification and helping you understand, I'm, I'm just taking it. Right? Like, like Jitain says, I have taken p equals to 6, q equals to 1. Yes. Better. Better than what we have taken earlier. So you have to decide what is going to be easy. Of course, playing with smaller numbers is always easier. So just do that. So p equals to 4, p equals to 0. What happens? p cube, 4 cube, 64. q is 0, so minus 0. Again q is 0, minus 0, minus 64. Done. Within no time you can say that option b, 0 is the answer. So again what you need to understand is the values that you substitute, random values that you substitute should be taken up in such a way that it becomes easier for you to do the verification. Right? We can take p as 30 also. If p is 30, what should be q? q should be 13. I am just giving an example, right? P equals to 30 implies Q should be 30. So 30 minus 26 is 4. But what happens? Your life will only get complicated by taking this. Right? So take as small uh, values as possible. Okay? Next question. Look at the next one. Similar question. Now M minus 5N equals to 2. Then the value of MQ minus 125N Q minus 30 MN is. Take it up now. M minus 5N equals to 2. So let's take M equals to... Let's take m equals to 2, n equals to 0, see what happens. See, sometimes you may have to do double verification. You are, you are able to follow. Like Sometimes it so happens that by taking up one set of values, two options may satisfy. Of course, in this case, two options cannot satisfy because every option is unique. But if it is given in terms of m and n, more than one option may satisfy. So then you will have to do one more substitution. Of course, we will discuss that uh, in, in the questions coming up. Let's, let's solve it now. So m equals to 2, n equals to 0, done. I am not taking any complex value, right? Simplest solution is take n equals to 0. 
m is 2. So 2 minus 0 is 2. Substitute now 2 cube 8 minus 0 minus 0. Answer should be 8. How much time does it take? Less than 10 seconds. In fact, 10 seconds is too much, I would say. Less than 5 seconds. Mental calculation. Look at this. Right? Ramakan Soni, who earlier said I used a long process, has now got the best method now. He says m equals to 2, n equals to 0. That is it. Answer is option 4. Option 4, 8. Now, honestly tell me, how many of you would have done something else in the exam? See, I am not bragging about my method here. That this is the... Of course, this is the best method, right? No doubts about that. But the question that I am trying to ask you or the, the point that I am trying to understand here is how many of you would have otherwise solved such questions using a long method? I mean, how many of you have learned something great which can help you save your precious time in the exam? Option 4 is the correct answer, right? Option 4, 8 is the correct answer. Yes. But how many, would of you, how many of you would have used a longer method? So say long method, right? Comment long method so that I can understand how many of you were unaware of this? I think Deepak says I would have used a longer method. Vikas Yadav says long method. Pankaj. Pankaj is saying me. I don't understand what me means here. Yeah. Look at this. Somebody says algebra cubic formula. Well, that's the traditional method. You actually have to cube the given equation. This one equation given here, right? M minus 5 and equals to 2. Traditional method is to you cube it. You cube it, you will get in terms of uh, the expression here and find it out. But is that needed? No. Fazan says I would have used a long method. Mankaj says I will use a long method. Aritra Banik says I will use this method. So good. Those who know the method already, please ensure that you apply uh, similar con I mean, uh, method in the exam, right? Same method in the exam. But others, practice and ensure that you also apply the same method. Getting it? So that's about it. Let us, let us move on to the next one. I will share my screens again. Hold on. One second. Yeah. So we're going to share it now. The next question on your screens now. Now that's an interesting one. Looks very complex. Maybe some of us will not even touch this question in the exam. Yes or no? We'll feel like why do we have to solve this? Anyway, it's gonna to take too much of time. But then not really. Anji says, if complete equation is given in x and y form, then how to solve it in easy way? Look at this one. This is not easy. He says m minus a squared, m minus a squared by b squared plus c squared, plus m minus b squared by c squared plus a squared, plus m minus c squared by a squared plus b squared equals to 3. Then what is the value of m? Now, answer options are given in terms of a, b, c. You see, all the options are given in terms of a, b and c. So, find out what is the correct answer. Skip. Vikram has skipped it. Suveda has skipped it. But Saubhagya Lucky and Mugesh has got, have got option 1 as the answer. A square plus B square plus C square. Deepak has also skipped it. But I think now that you know the smart method, you should not be skipping such questions. Think of what can be done to make it simple. And uh, Bhavani says we have directly substituted the option. Yes. So multiple ways of doing it, right? See, like Bhavani said, one simple way of Solving this is to substitute the option directly in place of m. Instead of substituting the values, substitute the option directly in place of m. But may get a longer sometimes, a little longer sometimes when option 4 is the answer. Here you are lucky that option 1 is the answer. So quickly you could verify. See if you substitute a square plus b square plus c square in place of m, what happens? a square and minus a square gets cancelled. Are you able to follow? Look at the first term. m minus a square by b square plus c square. So substitute a square plus b square plus c square, a square plus b square plus c square minus a square upon b square plus c square. So what happens? a square and a square gets cancelled. What are we left with? b square plus c square divided by b square plus c square, which is like 1. So the first term is 1. Now since the remaining terms are also symmetric to the first term, it will be resulting in 1 and 1. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals to 3. So that's one way of doing it. You can say option 1 is the answer, right? Otherwise, see, if you observe, the given expression here is like symmetric. Minus a square by b square plus c square. Minus b square, then the other two are taken in the denominator. c square and a square. Minus c square, the other two are taken in the denominator. a square plus b square. So, if you see, I can say, when will it become, uh, when will it become 3? It's like 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. You know that every term here will be equal. All the three terms will be equal. So, I can say m minus a square by b square plus c square equals to 1. Are you able to follow? I mean, another smarter approach, right? Another 
way of uh, doing it. The, the observation here is the terms given on the left hand side are symmetric. Now what do you understand by symmetry here? See, it's, it's not abrupt. Like for example, if it is given as m minus a square by b square plus c square and next term says plus m minus b square by or let's say 2ab plus bc and third term says m minus c square by b square plus uh, ac. If it is given like this, then these are not symmetric because every term looks completely different, right? But in the given case, if you see m minus a square, m minus b square, m minus c square, the other terms are taken as the denominator, b square, c square, c square, a square, a square, b square. And there is no other condition given with respect to a, b and c. So I can assume that each term here will be equal. Right? So what equal values substitution here will result in 3? 1 plus 1 plus 1. That should be 3. So I can say m minus a square by b square plus c square equals to 1. From this what do we get? m minus a square is b square plus c square or m is equal to a square plus b square plus c square. That's the other way of doing it. Option 1 is the answer. Or if you want you can substitute a, b, c some values for a, b and c in the question there. Accordingly find out the value of m and then substitute the same values of a, b and c in the answer option to check it. That is a little longer. That would be a little longer. Like for example let us substitute a equals to I am showing you the third method of solving this one. We have already discussed two methods. Both were smart. This also is a smart way of solving the question, right? Let's take A, B, C, all three equal to 1. Is there any condition given with respect to A, B and C? No. He just used A, B and C in the question. So substitute A, B, C, all three equal to 1. So what do we get? M minus 1 by 1 plus 1. Plus M minus 1 by 1 plus 1. Plus M minus 1 by 1 plus 1 equals to 3. Right or not? 1 square plus 1 square is 1 plus 1 only. So finally, if you take, uh, you know, this is like 3 times of m minus 1 by 1 plus 1. Yes or no? Like x plus x plus x is 3x. So is equal to. Now 3 and 3 gets cancelled. What do we get? m minus 1 equals to 2. So m is equal to 3. How did we get m equals to 3? By taking a, b, c as 1. Now what is he asking us to find out? What is the value of m? You know that the value of m is 3 m is equal to 3. That's it. Now what do you do? Substitute same a, b, c in the options and check which option gives you 3. Are you able to follow? So if you substitute in first option, 1 plus 1 plus 1, 3 satisfies. So this may be the possible answer. Remember, may be the possible answer. We cannot guarantee that this is the answer. You have to verify the remaining option first. If you look at second option, 1 minus 1 minus 1, this is like minus 1. Cancel. 1 plus 1 minus 1, so 2 minus 1 is 1. Cancel. This is like 1 plus 1, 2. Cancel. Option 1 is the correct answer. Are you able to follow? So that's that's how you can solve most of the questions from algebra without having to worry about the traditional method. Right? Look at this one. The simplest form of the expression p square minus p by 2 pq plus 6 p square divided by p square minus 1 by p square plus 3 p divided by p square by p square plus p plus 1. And options are also in terms of p. So another format where Question and the options both are in terms of the same variable, which is p in this case, right? The first term here is p square minus p by 2pq plus 6p square divided by p square minus 1 divided by p square plus 3p and this divided by p square by p plus 1. Look at the options 2p square, 1 by 2p square, p plus 3, 1 by p plus 3. Now find out the answer. Deepak says, now it is so easy. Yes, it is easy. But let me tell you, don't take it easy. Practice a good number of questions so that you can apply it efficiently in the exam. Right? I'm sure now you'll actually try and solve most of the questions using this technique. But don't get disappointed if you're not able to solve. Like I said, some questions cannot be answered using substitution. Right? Substitution is not the solution for every question. But it is for most of the solution for most of the questions. Anji says, please take one session on geometry. Yes, we'll do it. We'll do it. See, we have enough time for the exam now. SSC CGL exam has been postponed to August, right? So we have about, you know, three, three and a half months left. And I'm sure in between we'll have three sessions for geometry as well. But if you don't want to wait, you can enroll for our program, right? We have programs, online programs for SSC exams as well, where you can learn all these concepts across all the topics of all the subjects sitting at home. Anytime, anywhere. Mukesh says, I don't know this question, and I, I also saw some of you skipping this, right? Ramakan says, take p equals to 1. 
option two looks like option two is what most of you have got, huh? Option two. Well, all those who are talking about the SBI clerks session, let me tell you, we have already done a couple of sessions for the SBI clerks exam, right? We have had one session on uh, preparation strategy for SBI clerks, and then there was one session on English language. And in the coming weeks, we'll be doing previous year's papers of SBA clubs as well. So you just have to follow our events, right, on our Facebook page and YouTube channel to know the details of all such sessions. Option two, did you all get option two? Yes. See, let's let's follow the long. I think Manisha says uh, long method. Uh, looks like she has followed the long method. Let let us do it by long method and see what happens. See, if you go by long, he, what is he asking us to do? He's asking us to find out the simplest form of this expression. So this is actually a complex one. Look at the options, very simple. So let's, let's try what happens. Look at the first two terms, p squared minus p upon 2pq plus 6p squared. I'm taking only the first two terms, divided by p squared minus 1, p squared plus 3, right? I'm, I'm taking the first two terms, we'll take the division of these and then divide by the third term, third term which is p squared by p plus 1. Now what do we do in the first term here? Let's take p common in the numerator. So P, if you take common, we'll get P minus 1 divided by, right? Uh, let's take 2P common here. If we take 2P common, what do we get? Uh, or 2P square common, what do we get? 2P square, if you take common, P plus 3, right? Uh, then what do you do? I mean, you'll have to think like this. In the exam, what do you do? You'll have to kind of uh, try with various options and see. Now, now, uh, or, or I think we'll do one thing, we'll take, instead of taking 2p square common, let us take 2p common in the denominator. See, that's what, no? trial and error here also. By taking p square common, it won't help. We'll take only 2p common. So if we take 2p common, what do we get? p square plus 3p. Yes or no? p square plus 3p. I hope you're able to follow this. So 2p into p square, 2p cube, 2p into 3p, 6p square. Now this division can be converted to multiplication and we have to reverse the terms in the next fraction. You know this, right? We have discussed this in our speed maths uh, uh, video, speed maths and simplification video, right? Division, you can convert to multiplication and reciprocate the next term. So this becomes p square plus 3p divided by p square minus 1. Now what happens? p square plus 3p and p square plus 3p gets cancelled. Yes or no? And we are left with this and here p and p gets cancelled. So finally, what is the result of this? p minus 1 divided by 2 into p square minus 1, right? p minus 1 divided by 2 into p square minus 1. Now if you observe p square minus 1 again can be taken as p plus 1 into p minus 1. This is like a plus b into a minus b. You know the standard formula, right? a plus b into a minus b equals to a squared minus b squared. So here it is like p square minus 1 square. It can be taken as p minus 1 by p, p minus 1 into p plus 1. So again it is like p minus 1 divided by 2 into p minus 1 into p plus 1. So again what happens? P minus 1, P minus 1 gets cancelled. So what are we left with? 1 by 2 into P plus 1. Remember, this is the first two terms. So first two terms can now be replaced with 1 by 2 into P plus 1. This should be divided by what? This should be divided by P square by P plus 1. Now like I said, you can convert this to multiplication and reciprocate the terms. Or if you know how to do the cancellation, this P plus 1 and P plus 1 in the denominator will get cancelled. Yes or no? And P square will come in the denominator or let's let's keep it simple what we'll do 1 by 2 into p plus 1 division will be converted to multiplication and this second fraction will be reciprocated right we'll take the reciprocal of that so p plus 1 by p square so p plus 1 p plus 1 gets cancelled what are we left with 1 by 2 p square which is the final answer 1 by 2 p square option but look at the length of the solution of course you can do it much faster if you do it yourself because i was explaining it to you it took so much of time but even when you do it yourself However fast you do, it takes about 45 seconds, right? At least 45 seconds to arrive at the answer. 45 to 60 seconds to arrive at the answer, right? So what's the point? Don't do that. Don't do that. What do we do instead? Substitute some value of p. Let's take p equals to 2. Take p equals to 2. Substitute in the question. Substitute the same in the answer options. And check which option satisfies. There will be only one option which satisfies. If there is more than one option, then you'll have to, uh, you know, then you'll have to go for one more substitution, right? In such cases, like I was telling earlier also, right? Sometimes more than one option may satisfy the given substitution. Like by taking P equals 2, let's say two options satisfy. So you have to, what do you have to do? Substitute one more 
value of t and check which of these two are correct. Right? So let us see the smart method now. What we have done so far was nonsense. Now we are following a sensible method, the smart method, or I would say the smartest method to solve this. Take, take p equals to 2. Right? So if we take p equals to 2, what will this be? 2 square minus 2. So 4 minus 2 divided by 2 into p cube, 8 into 2, 16 plus 6 into p square, 6 into 4, 24. Are you able to follow? Divided by p square minus 1, 4 minus 1 divided by p square, 4 plus 3p is 6. Divided by p square, 4 and p plus 1 is 3. Now simplify, 4 minus 2 is 2 by 40 into, right, into, what is this? Uh, 4 minus 1, 3 by 10, but this will become 10 by 3. And this division again will become into, and this will be 3 by 4. Now simplify. So 3 and 3 gets cancelled. 2 into 10 is like 20, 20 goes 2 times, is like 1 by 8. 1 by 8, right? Answer should be 1 by 8. When? When you take p equals to 2. Substitute. If you take p equals to 2, this is 2 into 4, 8. Cancelled. Why? We need 1 by 8. This is 1 by 8. So possible. Right? This is 2 plus 3, 5. Cancelled. Right? This was 8. So cancelled. This is 1 by 8. So possible. And this is like 1 by 5. Cancelled. So answer is option 2. Now you decide which one do you like. Okay? So that's about it. Keep it simple, right? Don't make it complex. We, we actually, see the questions asked are simple. We make it complex by following all those unnecessary methods. Try this one now. Probably the last question of the session today. I think these many examples are enough for you to, uh, you know, uh, understand the method and be able to apply this in the exam, right? Balu Karthik says, why don't, why we don't go for substitution method? Well, Balu, Karthik, I didn't mean that we should not follow substitution method. I just wanted to show you the long method and then take substitution of p so that you can compare and understand how much time we can save. Mukesh says if we substitute 1, then also it is giving the correct answer. And maybe, just check. I didn't try with 1. I took it as 2, but if it is giving the correct answer, well and good. Remember, none of the answers or none of the options should be undefined or you know should result in infinite value. When you take p equals to 1 or p equals to 0. That you have to keep in mind. Like Pankaj is asking can we take p equals to 1. See it all depends on the question. I, I don't want to go back to that one now. But just see by taking p equals to 1. Is there any option that becomes undefined. Or uh, does the question become undefined. If no then that's the answer. I mean then you can probably take it. Okay. Jay says speed math session by all. Please by all students. It looks like there's a request from Jay. That take up speed math session for uh, for all of us. Well, like I said, we'll see uh, the schedule for the remaining sessions. If possible, we'll do a session on speed math. But like I've mentioned earlier, you you need not wait for that session to happen. You can enroll for our online programs and see the speed math session anytime you want. Right? What happens is you get access to about five hundred plus videos. Right? You can watch all these videos anytime you want. Let's say in the middle of the night. 2 o'clock you get up, 2 a.m. You feel like learning something, which is very unusual, it will not happen. But let's assume if you feel like learning at 2 a.m., right? What do you do? You cannot go to a classroom, but by using talent in program, you can start learning, right? Just switch your computer on, log into the website, and watch any topic that you want. So, what the answer? I think option 1 is what? Okay, answer is option 1, 0. That's what I see from Kumar, right? Kumar says it is option 1, 0. How about others? Others have also got option 1? Yes. So what do we do here? See, the question says, x equals, uh, you know, cube root of m plus 1 plus cube root of m minus 1 divided by cube root of m plus 1 minus cube root of m minus 1. The value of x cube minus 3 mx square plus 3x minus n. Simple. Substitute some value of m here. Get the value of x accordingly. Substitute the same values of m and x here and check. You get some results. You have to substitute the same values of m and x in the options also. So kind of a lot of substitution here, right? First substitute in the expression, then substitute in the I mean substitute in the equation, right? Then whatever results you get, substitute in the expression, then substitute the values taken in the options to check which one satisfies. But that's the best way. Looks to be lengthy, but very, very easy, right? Very, very easy. 
and, and it can become easier if you choose the values smartly. Right? So let's not think about solving this using the conventional method or the actual solution. It will, it will make your life uh, miserable. Right? Let's, let's keep it simple. So what do you want to substitute? Shall we substitute m equals to 1? Substitute m equals to 1. Is there any condition given that m should not be equal to 1? Nothing is given, right? And, and sometimes he can say that, uh, you know, in the brackets he can say m is not equal to 1. Like some for some questions, let's say, or, or for this question, let's say if it is given like m is not equal to 1. So you have to be careful. You cannot take m as 1 because he has clearly stated m is not 1. Then you can take 2, 3, 0, whatever you want, right? But anyway, since it is not given here, this is like unconditional. Let's take m equals to 1. So what happens? x equals to cube root of 1 plus 1 plus cube root of 1 minus 1 divided by cube root of 1 plus 1 minus cube root of 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 so what is this cube root of 2 plus this is like 0 right 1 minus 1 is 0 divided by this is like cube root of 2 minus 0 now is it defined or undefined defined right nothing wrong now what do we get 3 root 2 by 3 root 2 1 that means by taking m equals to 1 by taking m equals to 1 what do we get x also is equal to 1 substitute these values in the expression now so x cube will be 1 cube minus 3 into 1 into 1 square plus 3 into 1 minus 1 simplify this what 1 minus 3 plus 3 minus 1 will result in what 0 answer should be 0 when is the answer 0 when you take m equals to 1 and x equals to 1 now look at the problem the problem here is option 1 is 0 option 1 is 0 possible option 2 also will result in 0 because m is equal to 1. Substitute m equals to 1. 1 minus 1 by 1. 1 minus 1, 0. So this also is possible. Option 3, cancel. Because 1 plus 1 is 2. Option 4, cancel. So there are two possible answers. Either option 1 or option 2. So this is what I was trying to tell you so far, right? Sometimes multiple options may satisfy. More than one option may satisfy the given conditions. Now what do you do? You have got 0 by using both option 1 and option 2. Option 1 numerical value 0 is given, option 2 the expression is given in such a way that we are getting 0. Now you will have to do one more substitution. Right? To avoid the confusion you will have to do one more substitution. So I will clear it up and take something else. You know that 3 and 4 are anyway wrong. Now what do you want to take? Take m equals to 2 or take m equals to 3. See what happens. Or take m equals to 2. Take m equals to 2. What happens? x equals to 3 root 3 plus 3 root 1, uh, I mean cube root of 1, divided by cube root of 3 minus cube root of 1. So this is like cube root of 3 plus 1, is or no? Cube root of 1 is 1, divided by cube root of 3 minus 1. Now this is getting complex, right? I mean cube root of 3 plus 1 divided by cube root of 3 minus 1. Uh, so what do we do? Now taking uh, x in the expression cubing it and all that make it complex, right? Yes or no? So this is what has to be avoided. I mean, this is what has to be avoided. By taking n equals to 2, it is only getting complex. So what shall we do? Uh, shall, shall we take m equals to 0? Can you take m equals to 0? Yes, I think we can take m equals to 0, right? Nothing wrong. So cube root of 1 plus cube root of minus 1 by cube root of 1 minus cube root of minus 1. Right? What have you done? Did you all say option 1 is the answer by just taking one substitution or you have verified second option also? I know everybody said option 1 is the answer but how many of you had, you know, cancelled option 2? Just don't blindly mark option 1 as the answer. You see, sometimes we get struck. We get struck between two options. So what do you want to do? Tell me what have you done? before I proceed with the solution. You have seen right what happened by taking m equals to 1 initially we got x equals to 1 which resulted in option 1 or option 2. Now what do you do? Vikram says in the exam if m is not equal to 0 or 1 then what to do? Then substitute something else. Substitute 2, substitute 3, maybe substitute m equals to 7. So cube root of 7 plus 1, cube root of 8 becomes 2. Of course, the other term will be in a third form there. But I think that's how you do it, right? Don't try to simplify using the actual method, the conventional method. You're getting it? Will taking m equals to 0 help? Look at what Dipanshu says. If I take m equals to 0, it will become an imaginary root. Yes. 
m equals to zero, this term will result in what? Cube root of zero minus one. Cube root of minus one. Cube root of minus one. Molik says skip. No, do you want to skip? See, I'll tell you one more point here. You know, writing exams is like doing business. If you want to grow in business, you have to take risk, right? Entrepreneurs are risk takers. If you want to grow in your exam also, I mean, if you want to increase your score, you have to take risk in certain cases. Not risk in every question, but in some questions. Like here, after initial substitution, we know that 3 and 4 are wrong. Now, at this stage, you must not skip it. Because you are confused between 1 and 2, you should not skip it. Because even if you go for a guess between these two options, there are 50% chances that your answer will be correct. You are able to follow. Can you take m equals to 0? m cannot be taken as 0. Let me tell you guys, m cannot be taken as 0 because by taking m equals to 0, option 2 becomes undefined. 1 by 0 is undefined. So, you, I mean, your answer may be right. Maybe you are there. But strictly speaking, m equals to 0 is a wrong substitution because second option becomes undefined. 1 by 0 is undefined. Overall is undefined. That should not be done. I have told you in the beginning itself, right? Never take values or never assume values which will result in undefined or infinite solutions. You get it? So what do we do? I mean, at this stage, when you know three and four are wrong, either mark option one or mark option two. Don't just don't don't just skip it. Skipping at this stage would be foolish, I would say. Right? So what do you want to do? Take x equals to one. What happens if you take x equals to one? See, it's not a rule that we have to start with m, right? Let's take x equal to one and see what happens. If you take x equals to one, then what do we get? Cube root of m plus one minus cube root of m minus 1 equals to cube root of m plus 1. See, there are different ways of doing it, right? Just don't follow one type of substitution of this. We are doing a different case now. Generally, we substitute m and find out x. Now, I am substituting x as 1 and trying to establish the value of m. So, what happens is numerator and denominator will become equal. Cube root of m plus 1 minus cube root of m minus 1 will be equal to cube root of m plus 1 plus cube root of m minus 1. So, these terms get cancelled. What are we left with? Cube root of m minus 1 into 2 equals to 0. Yes or no? Let's, let's take this term on the right hand side. So, cube root of m minus 1 plus cube root of m minus 1. So, 2 times of cube root of m minus 1 will be equal to 0. So, what does this mean? Cube root of m minus 1 is equal to 0. Which implies m minus 1 is 0. Okay, and m is equal to 1. Okay, I think although this appeared to be better, but we are doing the same thing. By taking m equals to 1, we got x equals to 1. So, by taking x equals to 1, you got m equals to 1. So, what do you want to do? You want to want mark option 1 or option 2. Or, take some value of m and you have to do that complex simplification. Maybe you can do, I mean, if you have to go by conventional method, what you can do? Take component to dividend. So, if you take component to dividend, it will get reduced to some format. I mean, you get x plus 1 by x minus 1 something and that, that may be helpful, right? Some of you are saying take m equals to minus 1. How can you take m equals to minus 1? See, by taking m equals to minus 1, this term and this term will get cancelled. But what are we getting here? Q root of minus 2. Minus Q root of minus 2. Shall we cancel that? Okay, let's, let's see. m equals to minus 1. So, x will be equal to 0 plus Q root of minus 2 divided by 0 minus Q root of minus 2. So, what do we get? x equals to minus 1. Huh, I think this helps. This is smart substitution, right? Whoever has done this is good. I think Swagato energy. So that's a smart way of doing it, right? If you don't want to go for taking a chance there, taking a risk there, substitute something like this. So what are we getting? x equals to minus 1. So for m1, we got x as 1. For m minus 1, we get getting x as minus 1. Now substitute again x cube minus 1 cube minus 3 into minus 1 into minus 1 square plus 3 into minus 1. Minus of minus 1, right? Be careful with the signs there. Both are negative, right? So, minus 1 cube is minus 1. Now, this is like uh, minus 3 into minus 1 is plus 3 because minus 1 square is anyway 1. This is minus 3 and this is plus 1. So, what do we get? 0. Again, we are getting 0. Now, substitute. See, we need not worry about third and fourth options now because anyway, they were cancelled in the initial case itself. Now, 0, option 1 satisfies. Option 2, what happens in option 2? Minus 1, minus of 1, minus 1. This again feels right. Minus 1 plus 1 will give you 0. So I think still it doesn't help. Even by taking m equals to minus 1 doesn't help. 
right? See, option one may be the answer, zero is the answer there. But like I said, sometimes it can be tricky. And intentionally, this question was planted, I would say, because you should realize the uh, complexities also. It's, it's not that it's like very, very easy, 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 and you can always do it, right? Like, like sometimes it happens, we get stuck. That's what Malik is asking. In such type of questions, if we try two or three substitutions and not get any answers, then only eliminate two options, then what to do? Then you take a chance after doing two, three substitutions. That's what I'm telling you, right? See, if you have already spent some time, let me come back to the screen. If you have already spent some time by doing one or two substitutions, and if you are unable to decide the answer even after that, then take a chance. Because the investment that you have made, investment of the time that you have made, has to get you something, right? So, two options are left, 50-50 chances that your answer will be correct. So, either mark the answer, option 1 or option 2, based on your gut feeling. It will either give you plus 1 or minus 0 0.25. I mean, you should be prepared for that. After spending so much time, you cannot just leave it. Or if you say, no, I want to solve it, go for a regular method, which may take a lot of time, right? You may end up wasting a lot of time. Or take some typical value of n, you will get x in terms of 3 root 7, minus 3 root 7 and all that, right? And then you have to cube it. So that will only make it complex. You are getting it? So the, the point is, substitution is actually a very good method, right? For most of the questions from algebra. But not applicable for every question. In some questions, you actually have to follow a conventional method, right? Which we haven't discussed in today's session, right? Today's session was focused on substitution method. And within substitution also, like you've seen in the last example, sometimes it gets complicated. So you have to either complete it using traditional method or you know simplifying the complex values or take a chance and mark one of the responses. Do not skip it after having spent 30-40 seconds and eliminating two options. More importantly, two options are eliminated. You know that three and four are definitely wrong. It should either be one or two. So at this stage, you should take a chance. You're not taking a blind guess. It's a well-calculated guess, right? 50-50 chances are there. So I think with this question, we'll close it here. There are many more questions which we can solve using this method. So you just keep practicing more and more questions and see where it is applicable. But don't blindly mark one, right? I'm sure all those who said option one, option one in the beginning, did not verify option two properly. They thought zero, option one is the answer. So be careful. Sometimes it may give you minus 0 0.25 if you're, not, uh, if you're not careful there. Okay? So... That's about the session today. I hope all of you have enjoyed this. Please apply this smart method for solving questions from trigonometry, I mean algebra and trigonometry as well. And also we can use it in geometry if, if you know how and where to apply. And, and to learn all this, you can always uh, subscribe for our online courses uh, for SSC and bank exams. Uh, visit talentsprint.com slash bank, right? You can visit our website talentsprint.com slash bank or call our toll free number which is 1-800-2000-916 I'll put it on the board here right you can reach us at 1-800-2000-916 right and the website is talentsprint.com slash bank I am sure most of you are already our students I mean subscribe students and they would know what the benefits are right I'm sure your preparation is at its peak using the talentsprint program but for others you can check this website or call us on this number to get the program details. All right, and remember, a very special offer is going on uh, for the next two three days, so don't miss this golden opportunity. Okay, all said and done, whether you join or not, keep practicing because practice is the key. The more you practice, the easier it is. Right, and the only shortcut to crack these exams is to practice more. Right, so practice, practice and practice a little more. That's it. I'm sure we'll be able to crack this exams without any difficulty. So keep practicing. We'll meet again in the next session. And till then, just keep practicing and take very good care of yourselves. See you. If you're in the habit of reading, then this question type is relatively easier. But if you're not, then you cannot miss this session. I'm talking about passage completion, also known as close test. Now passage completion tests your language proficiency and your ability to look at context as a whole meaningfully. I'm going to be taking you through a few simple but essential. Hi everybody, welcome to Talent Sprint. I'm Avipsa back again with a quick highlight of events of the week gone by. Let's take a look at the national events first. Prime Minister Shunari 
Narendra Modi has launched the e-national agriculture market portal, that is the e-now, to connect e-mandis in several states.